The second question is about e-codes. What is the ruling on using foods that contain pork derived substances and how to deal with them? E-codes, for example. Well, it is a rule of thumb that anything that contains haram ingredients is haram by itself. And nowadays, with modern production of food, canned food and the likes, we have a vast array of products that are either ambiguous or confusing. And we spend a lot of time on the shelves in supermarkets reading the uh, uh, ingredients and what, is, what does it contain. And this may cause a lot of hardship. However, it is best for a human being to be safe rather to be sorry. So if you live in a Muslim country, like Saudi Arabia, like Kuwait, for example, and you know that the authorities there go out of the way to ensure that everything that comes through their borders is halal. I personally, when I shop, I don't look at the ingredients because I'm confident that it is halal. I buy anything and I eat anything. It's all legit with the grace of Allah. If I were to go to Europe or to the, U to the, to the US, then I would be hesitant to buy things I don't know. And hence, I would read the ingredients. Now, most of these products have e-codes on them, E250, 735, etc. I don't know what these codes are all about. When you look into them, some straightforward say it's haram. Why? Because it contains ingredients that have, that have uh, pork fat uh, or pork meat or haram meat in it. If it were vegetarian, it's kosher, it's halal. If it were derived from sea uh, uh, creatures, then it's totally halal. The ambiguity comes whether it is from halal meat, such as cows and, and sheep, whether they were slaughtered Islamically or not, or whether it's from haram meat, such as uh, dogs and, and dead horses and uh, maybe uh, uh, pork. So what is the ruling? There are two opinions. One says that it's haram until proven otherwise. And the other is halal until proven otherwise. And the e-codes usually refers to glycerin or uh, whatever is related to it, such as gelat gelatin. And these products, a lot of the scientists say that they undergo a vigorous and rigorous, if this is even a word, uh, process that would change its chemical and physical characteristics beyond its original form. So it changes, it transforms into a new substance. And in Islam, when a substance changes drastically to another substance, it becomes halal. So if I have juice and I left it, forgot about it, came back a few weeks later and I found it turning into vinegar, I know that it went into being wine, then from wine to vinegar. So can I consume it? The answer is yes. If it's not deliberate, then it changed by itself. It changed from wine, which is haram, into a halal substance. Likewise, if you irrigate a, an apple tree with sewer water, the sewer water is transformed formed into something that is sweet and pure and, and healthy and halal in an apple. So you can eat that without any problem and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.